Hello friends and welcome back uh, to the beginning of a, a new series on uh, corn cob pipes. We're going to be talking about corn cob pipes in terms of just understanding the pipe, uh, talking about how they smoke, but also in terms of modifying them, uh, doing things as simple as just changing the stem or, or uh, improving how the tobacco chamber functions, all the way up to completely modifying the pipe into something very different and unique. So what I have here in front of you is a collection of pipes from a company called Missouri Meerschaum. And if you know anything about corn cob pipes, I'm sure you know about the Missouri Meerschaum company. Uh, they've been making these pipes since 1869. Uh, great US-based company, makes a very high quality product. And I really don't see much of a reason to look for other corn cob pipes because these guys just have nailed it. They, they know how to make them and they always put out a great quality product. And you can find them uh, just about anywhere you can find uh, tobacco. Many, many brick and mortar shops carry them. Uh, all of the online retailers, I believe, carry, it, carry them. Uh, and you can order directly from Missouri Meerschaum. And there's also companies like Aristocob that sells not only uh, Missouri Meerschaum pipes, but also accessories for the pipes and you know new bits and things like that. Uh, so I'll put some links down below uh, just, just in case you haven't run across any of these things. And I highly encourage you to take a look at both uh, the Missouri Meerschaum website and the Aristocob website. So make sure you check out those links. So what we have here is, is a collection of cobs, and I'm going to talk about all of these in, in turn, uh, just to kind of introduce you to, to, to the cob and, and what the benefits are and you know what, what the sort of things are that we can do with them. So let's start off with, uh, well, we'll start off with this guy here. This is the uh, Missouri Meerschaum Diplomat. And it's, I'm sorry, this this is actually quite bright for, for the lights here. But the uh, the Diplomat is uh, is a nice, you know, sort of rounded bowl. I, I don't actually know much about the shapes on these guys other than this is what a Diplomat looks like. <laughs> Uh, it is one of the pipes, and, and many of the Missouri Mission pipes have a hardwood plug in the bottom. So the, the, the way these are made is this is a piece of a, a corn cob, and you know the center of the cob is kind of a pithy uh, core that is drilled out. And in some of them, uh, that forms the bottom of the tobacco chamber, which is you know a soft um, surface, perhaps prone to burnout. Uh, on many of the pipes, that's replaced with this hardwood plug, uh, which is probably cherry or, or something, cherry or oak or something. Um, and that plug forms the bottom of the, uh, the chamber and helps, you know, just provide some longevity and prevents burnout. Into the side of the cob is inserted a wooden um, shank, and that is actually extending through the tobacco chamber. And as you can see in here, it actually forms the bottom of the tobacco chamber. So this right here, this sort of U-shaped cutout, is a cross-section of this uh, basically dowel that has a hole running down the center of it. So that's inserted through, but the end is beveled. And that bevel is what's forming the bottom of your combustion chamber. So this is sort of the corn cob version of having the drilling of a draft hole in a briar pipe come out dead center on the the uh, the bottom. Uh, the stem on these pipes is typically inserted into a metal ferrule at, at the end of the, the, the hardwood dowel and you can see that the draft on this is absolutely wide open so it's designed to fit a six millimeter feeder designed to fit a six millimeter filter uh, which many of the pipes are, are uh, equipped with but you don't need that filter. Um, you can actually smoke these just fine without the filter, and they have a fantastic draw. Um, you know, on a briar pipe, I might suggest that you couldn't do that, that you might have to somehow put an insert in here or something, because six millimeters is a pretty wide draft hole, but it works on the, on the corn cobs for some reason. It works really well. So I don't use the filters. I, I, I never have. Some people like them, and that's good too. Uh, the bit, uh, or stem is made of a uh, propionic plastic, and that's true of all but the freehand pipes, the Missouri Meerschaum freehands. I don't have a freehand to show you, but uh, they're, they're a more elaborate, large cob, you know, what you would expect from a freehand. And they do come with a vulcanite stem. The propionic plastic stems 
are available in both black and in this amber uh, color, and they're they're good. They're you know they're they're actually quite uh, robust, and unless you chew on them, which I do, uh, they're going to last a long time. They don't they don't oxidize, which is a big plus as well. They don't have the same mouthfeel as vulcanite, so you may not like that, and that's something that we can change. Now the the country gentleman, which is this guy here, is actually my personal favorite uh, of the, the Missouri Meerschaum line. Uh, it's got this uh, bowl that is, that is stained, and I, sh I should mention that the, they do um, coat these bowls in, in some sort of a plaster-like uh, substance which will fill in the imperfections in, in the cob, you know, the natural imperfections, you expect them to be there. Some of their pipes are, are natural and they don't do that, but, but on the Country Gentleman it, it's filled in and then there's a stain applied um, which, you know, makes it just nice sort of rustic appearance. Uh, otherwise the construction is very similar to what I described for the Diplomat. You know, you've got this shank that's inserted down through the tobacco chamber and the, uh, the, the propionic plastic uh, stem, the uh, plastic bit rather, um, and a metal furrow. One of the nice things about the Country Gentleman is it just has a very nice large tobacco chamber. Um, and I, I like the shape. I, th I think it, it just, it, it's just a nice looking pipe in my opinion. Now, I, I have a lot of these and this is one of the ones that I first uh, started modifying. And here I've got two pipes. and. You know, I'm showing you these for a couple reasons. I want to talk about the modification, but also I want to talk about longevity of these. You know, people consider these to be a disposable pipe, a fishing pipe or, or, or a lawn mowing pipe or something like that. And you know, when you're paying eight to ten dollars for something like this, it's perfectly fine to think of it that way. Uh, however, you don't have to dispose of them. Uh, these are both going on four years old. Uh, these were bought at the same time, so they're they're brothers in a sense. Um, this one, you can see, it's got a sort of copper band here around the the uh, the shank and that is there to oh, sorry that's not focusing very well is it um, I, I put that on there so that I can easily find this pipe in, in my rack uh, because this is one that I've modified and what I've done here let's just go back to the to the new country gentleman and, and remind you that there is that extension into the to the tobacco chamber which is forming the bottom uh, where the tobacco is combusted. On this pipe I've removed that so I actually went in and carved it out and replaced it with a um, substance called pipe mud which is basically cigar ash and water and I'm going to take you through that process in one of these videos to show you how I did this. Um, it does improve in my opinion the smoking quality of the pipe. This one I have not done anything to. I just smoked this one as it came from Missouri Meerschaum and you can see after four years there is some still some of that uh, boy, it's very difficult to see down in the darkness there isn't it but there is still some of that wooden shank remaining in there and you know do I, I occasionally can taste it as, as I'm smoking the tobacco you, know, you occasionally do get sort of a burning wood flavor from it uh, it's not a big deal it, it it's fine. I'm, I smoke this pipe all the time and I'm perfectly happy with it. But in my opinion, this guy that I, that I worked on smokes a little bit better. Now maybe that's just my opinion and maybe because I'm the guy that did the work, but that's okay. If, uh, if you're the guy that does the work, you'll probably feel the same. So I'll show you how to make those modifications uh, probably to this country gentleman, just because I, I think it, it smokes really well uh, with or without the modifications. And the other pipe that I wanted to show you, and which leads into sort of the, the, the purpose of this series, is this guy here. Now this is a, I believe this is a Mark Twain. Uh, I'm not certain of the shape because I did not buy this uh, as an individual pipe. Uh, this came in a set of pipes. So Missouri Meerschaum sells basically their seconds. This is, uh, you can see the, the marking here on the, on the tag. Uh, these are pipes that did not pass their quality assurance review and for whatever reason were labeled seconds. You can buy a box of 10 Missouri Meerschaum seconds. You don't know what you're going to get, but they're all going to be, you know, from their lineup for $30. So that's $3 a pipe. 
And if you're interested in doing modifications and playing with these, uh, it's a great value. You know, buy a box of them, you can take them apart, you can, you can cut into them, you can replace the plugs, you can do whatever you want. And at the most you lose three dollars when you screw up. Uh, even if you don't want to do that, it's a great value just for some pretty good smoking pipes. There's nothing wrong with this. I can't figure out why this was a second. The only thing that strikes me about it, and boy the lights are just not working with these lighter colored pipes today, there is some very significant uneasiness in, uh, un uneasiness, unevenness in how this um, cob looks. So it's very rough up here. Uh, it's very smooth down here. Maybe that was the problem. There also does seem to be a significant amount of uh, this plaster-like material built up in and around the, the shank here. So maybe there's some weakness there. I don't know. Uh, but it, but clearly Missouri Meerschaum has some pretty high quality standards because I've, I've gone through many of these seconds and I have not been able to find an obvious flaw in any of them. So 30 bucks, you get 10 pipes, and uh, you can either smoke them or play with them. It's a good deal. So, this is a pipe that I'm going to try and modify, substantially. I'm going to try to turn this into something different. And that'll be in the, the last video of this series. So let's go through what my plans are. I'm probably going to have three additional videos. The first will be um, doing the modifications to the country gentleman that I've done here. So getting rid of the um, this extension of the shank here. Uh, cleaning out the chamber a bit, you can see there's some stain that gets into the chamber, uh, which doesn't affect smoking quality, but it'd be nice to kind of try to sand that out a bit. And then replacing the bottom of the chamber with, uh, with pipe mud, and making sure that we have an open draft hole and that the draft hole is located in the, in the correct place. So that'll be the first video, and if you want to take those steps, you can turn this $8 pipe into something that, that really smokes fantastic. Um, not that it's not smoking really good when you get it for eight bucks, but it, it, it's, it's a worthwhile thing to do. In the second video, I'm going to focus on uh, stems. And what I'd really like to do is show you how to replace this stem with a vulcanite stem using a preformed vulcanite blank that you can get rather inexpensively. And I'm going to show you, if all goes well, I'm going to show you how to do that using nothing but hand tools. Uh, and, and things that you probably have available in, in, in your, your home right now or could easily get for, you know, under $10 or something. So uh, that's, that's the plan. I have to admit I'm not 100% certain how well that's going to go because there is a challenge in terms of fitting this, uh, this, morti this tenon rather, into this mortise to make sure that you got that tight fit. So we'll do our best. And, and see how that works out. But I'd like to give you guys the ability to make those kinds of changes on your own without needing to own a lathe. And then lastly, the, the, the final video in this series, so there'll be this one plus three. Uh, I'm gonna take this pipe and I'm gonna turn it into something completely different. I don't know what that looks like yet. I don't know exactly what we're gonna be doing. I'm guessing at a minimum, we're gonna be removing the shank and replacing it with a different shank and we're probably going to be putting on a custom stem. Um, and that will be the, the final video in this series. The reason I want to, to do that is that there's a contest going on right now, or actually about to start, uh, at Aristocob. And I will put um, uh, the Aristocob information down in the bucket so that you can take a look at that and, and uh, you know take a look at Scott's channel. Uh, Scott from Aristocob has a really nice uh, channel. He also has a great channel with his son uh, called Mark Wood's Men's, Men's Breakfast Club that I enjoy watching. Uh, I'd highly recommend you check them out. And every year Scott runs a contest called Cobb Foolery. And this contest is going to be running through the month of April. What Cobb Foolery is, is a, uh, an opportunity to take a corn cob pipe and modify it in whatever way you want, turn it into something new, turn it into a unique pipe, and submit it for judging. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, I'll try to post a link to some of the past entries, or I think there was a summary video that uh, showed some of the, some of the entries, uh, just so you can get an idea of just how creative people can be with these. So I wanted to make these videos around this time to, first off, just introduce you to corn cobs if you're not familiar with them, to give you some information on how to 
how to play with corn cobs, how to have fun with them, how to how to improve them, uh, and lastly to kind of coincide with cob foolery so that if there's any guys out there that would like to enter that but just don't know how to get started or need some some tips, uh, these videos will be available for you and, and hopefully will give you the the uh, encouragement that you need to, to get an entry in. So with that, I'm going to, to end this, this uh, first sort of intro video. I hope you found it informative, and I hope that you will uh, watch the, the upcoming videos as we start to do some modifications on these pipes and, uh, and just enjoy them. So with that, I will, I will uh, say goodbye. Uh, thank you all for watching. Take care of yourself, and I will look forward to talking to you again soon.